Nigeria could lose Commonwealth membership over horrifying treatment of British citizens in Andy Kano, UK author for Sight. Opens up. The British writer made this known in an article published on express.co.uk where he condemned the United Kingdom government for their non-intervention in Kano's matter with the Nigerian government. Frederick Forsyth, a British author, journalist, and a political analyst, has opined that Nigeria could lose its membership of the Commonwealth of Nations due to the continuous detention of Onam de Kano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Ipo. The British writer made this known in an article published on express.co.uk where he condemned the United Kingdom government for their non-intervention in Kano's matter with the Nigerian government. He contended that if the UK government could be indifferent to the ordeals of its citizens being humiliated and tortured abroad, anyone with a British passport may face the same fate as Kano. And that's the biggest truth. Because Namdi Kano is a black and is an Igbo man, they decided to keep moot, let them not worry. He wrote a few days ago, I had never heard of Namdi Kano and the chances and neither had you. So briefly, he's 55 and was born and raised in Nigeria, specifically Eastern Nigeria, which was then involved in a civil war with the federal government in Lagos. The issue then was the desire of his Igbo people, the majority in Eastern Nigeria, to separate as a new Republic of Biafra. It was defeated and reabsorbed, but let me correct that, Biafrans were not defeated. But in adulthood, this has become his life course. The recreation, the recreation of the vanished Biafra so far, so removed from all of us, but is now and has been for many years a British citizen. His family home in the South London, and that, as for all of us, accords certain rights and protections. One of these is the consular service, which is supposed to do all it can to help us if we never get into any form of trouble abroad. Several times in my life, I have felt that stiff blue passport is my breast pocket, a very comforting bulge. Whether his ambition for a separate state for his ethnic homeland is a pipe dream or not, his writing, speaking and validating for his cause is or should be no more illegal than what the SNP is doing up in Scotland and in and Nigeria is a leading member of the Commonwealth, a privilege that forbids membership to dictatorship on pain of expulsion. But two years ago, Namdi Kano was snatched in Nairobi by the pretty horrifying Nigerian secret police, hustled to the airport with the seeming con convenience of the Kenyans, and flown to Nigeria. Since then, he has been in the underground cell in the capital, Abuja. As such, he is a few hundred years from our high commission which contains the councillor department report from his family. Say he is in the failing health, denied all medical help and regular beating up. Given the savage record of Nigerian secret police, no surprise there then. According to my information, he has been twice visited by British officials who have made representations. Apparently, just representations, but I am also advised that British concerns are to the Nigerians as worrying as a brother, bothersome house fly. His lodge appeal to the Nigerian Supreme Court hovers somewhere in the stratosphere. Meanwhile, Kano has been held in solidarity confinement at the DSS headquarters in Abuja since June 2021, following his abduction in Kenya and his traditional tradition to Nigeria, despite repeated court decisions and the UN opinion that Kano should be on conditional release and transferred to either Kenya where he was imprisoned or London where he resides. <clears throat> the government has taken no actions. Kano traveled to Kenya with a British passport prior to his abduction and relation to Nigeria. The Abuja Court of Appeal determined that his tradition breached all established international protocols. This is a shame that people want to keep doing and keep playing as a country. We'll get to the point of where victory will definitely accord. But Nigeria is about to lose their commonwealth right because in no cause, 
it will eventually happen and the press will become more involved. The United Nations does not sanction three or four people, others will not learn. But the questions I get on daily basis is that is it possible for the nation of Biafra to be free from all this mess, this lies, this hatred? Is it possible? Because this very thing is becoming more frustrating, more uncalled for on a daily basis. But one thing is very, very important here is that people will get to see most knowledgeable stuff that is put across. And that's one thing. You understand? That's one thing most people do not understand. There are so many theologies there are so many unwarranted groups. There are so many lies about their friends internationally. But one thing is sure is that no matter the whole stuff that is going on now, Biafra has come to stay. Biafra has come to stay. And why I say that Biafra has come to stay is that if sanctions if sanctions are not made in accordance, then more hideous calamity will be for. So who and who needs to be sanctioned for the freedom of Biafra to happen? That whole that whole lot of you know stuff that is made. And that is why one of the biggest victory must be put in accordance. A whole lot of lies that must be put in accordance. So let the game and the bargain begin. But I must tell every one of you that a time has come that the necessary thing must be done.